Hi, everybody, and welcome to the backyard here on a Saturday evening. Get out of the direct sunlight for a second. It's been a month since I've used Starlink, and there's reasons I need to practice this weekend. I'm going to be doing this again tomorrow. The goal tonight is just to test this and dust off the cobwebs in the old noggin uh, before we lose light completely. Hey, Don from Los Angeles and David and Kathy from Australia. Have a good one. And Brizzy, Robert, Douglas, etc. Wonderful. We are 5x5. Five five. Terrific. Let me get you on one of the iPads that seems to be working. And um, I'll grab a drink and we will begin at uh, 740. So we're going to begin this live stream. I guess it's, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. Maybe I'll keep this one. Uh, I don't think I have much planned, but whatever. We'll start the program in eight minutes from now. If you're watching the replay of this and I happen to keep this one, let's go ahead and keep it. Um, and we'll start at eight minutes from now. I'll be with you in just a second. Let's have you look into the evening light here live at 7.33 p.m. Uh, in Ellensburg, Washington, USA. Muffler boy. Yeah, be with you in just a sec. Bijou's outside. Outside without earbuds, and she is. Okay, it's a Saturday night. It's a beautiful evening. The muffler boys are out in force. And uh, everybody's just out to have a good time, I guess. We've got about 100 watching live. This episode of Nick from the Backyard brought to you by Bubbly. Bubbly sparkling water. Are there side effects to drinking this? Probably. Oh, look, it's backlit perfectly. Look at that. All right, Bijou's uh, behind you, uh, hanging out with Liz in the garden. Maybe he'll come over for a quick appearance. I have a, um, come on, come on. I have an only partially charged uh, microphone, so I'll keep an eye on this. And if I get rolling with you guys, uh, I will uh, switch to the other microphone. All right. I don't have my Etch-a-Sketch. I've got this other iPad. Can I say hi to a few of you? Where are you viewing from? It's been a month since we've done this. And if you just joined us, we're going to start in four minutes uh, with a program that I have no idea what it will be, but we'll figure it out. Chris is in St. Mary's County, Maryland, USA. Uh, Greg Paul, that's probably uh, Australia there. Hello. G Alberta Gary is with us. Uh, Douglas, Arizona, Ontario, Canada, Vancouver, Canada, Manassas, Virginia, Birch Bay, Glasgow, that's uh, Glasgow, Scotland, that's Gordon, he's a regular, Jeanette's in El uh, Everett, uh, Washington, Mount Pleasant, Iowa, Ashland, Wisconsin, Ski Bum is in White Salmon, Washington, we are 5x5, five five, I hope, uh, Portland, Oregon, Auburn, Washington, Hotel Papa, 100, Switzerland, what's up, homie? He has no business being awake. Well, you're all cuddled in there next to your chocolate and your cheese. Uh, what's up, countrymen? Hobart, Tasmania. Chico, California, that's Sean Kelly. Lebanon, Oregon, I was just down there uh, for the week uh, in the Corvallis area, enjoyed it very much. You have a beautiful valley that you live in. Astoria, Oregon, North Carolina, Central Idaho. Kingston, Washington, Bethesda, Maryland. There's Sharon from the Malaga Slide. Hi, Sharon. Thanks again for all your efforts. Uh, that's part of my little update here this evening. 
Emmett, Idaho, Portugal. Hello, Andre. Friday Harbor, Washington. Liftoff says good morning from Wuppertal, Germany. Hello. Heidi's from Chico, California. Christmas Valley, Oregon. San Clemente, California. I think I'm live. Uh, sorry, Nick, but it's Kingsgate. All right, thank you. Uh, good morning from Nigeria. Well, hello from the United States of America, where we're about to have the sunset here. Great to have you with us um, in the middle of the night tomorrow. Neetards, Oregon, New Mexico. Peter says, I am live. Uh, so true. Does that mean we should start? No, I still got two minutes. I would say I would stop and get my head right, but I have no idea what we're going to do. This was just going to be a test. I think the title of this is testing, but I don't know. Um, I do have some uh, fun stuff to share with you, so maybe we'll keep this one. Uh, it's just, uh, as I've mentioned a while back, uh, if, especially if I don't do this for a while, uh, it, it is just a jolt of electricity, a jolt of electricity going through my body to have you all here. Um, I get emotional just thinking about uh, what we have here. And I do miss it when I'm, I'm not in the groove with you all. Crystal Clear says, Jeanette, thank you. Yeah, um, uh, I'll save that in a second as well. Okay, I guess I do need to get my head right. L let, me, let me run upstairs and grab a couple Brett's papers quick, and then we'll get started. Uh, thanks for joining. Thanks for joining us. Give me two more minutes. And we'll begin our program entitled something. Lost the tracking, apparently. Lost the tracking, okay. There we go. All right, grabbed a few papers. Settle in, we're gonna be here a while. No, I just, This will be haphazard as usual. Okay, can I double check one more time? We're five by five and we are tracking and ready to go. If so, we're just gonna let it rip here. Thank you, and no delay in the comments for some reason. That's interesting. A pleasant good evening to you all from Ellensburg, Washington, USA. It's about 85 degrees Fahrenheit. The local time is about 7.41 p.m. on a beautiful Saturday evening. And I am uh, testing the Starlink technology because it's been a month since I've done this. But I also will probably get a roll on what I've been doing with J. Harlan Bretz's papers and more of the help that has been provided by this community, this very unique community. Um, and then I think 
the goal tonight was just to make sure I knew, remembered how to get this going with Starlink. And uh, I think the goal is tomorrow morning. Maybe I should set a time. Uh, maybe tomorrow morning, let's say something. Okay. Tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I'm going to do a live stream from here and I'm going to schedule it. I'm going to schedule a live stream and I'll have my uh, blank together uh, tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. So I'll keep all this stuff out. I'll try to get it rolling again. I tried to get uh, my laptop to be shared properly using OBS, but I can't remember how to do that. So it's just this camera tonight that is tracking, I believe. Yes. So I'll see you, many of you, tomorrow morning, if you like, with the scheduled live stream, 8 a.m., and I'll schedule and post that scheduled live stream tonight before I go to bed so that it's ready for you. And some of you can join ahead of time uh, and chit-chat like we have done in the past uh, few years. Let me make a few quick comments in case you've been out of touch with the YouTube channel, and then I'll share a few things with what I have uh, tonight. Not to steal the thunder from tomorrow, I guess. Uh, I'm heading to Western Idaho on Monday morning, and I have a full day's drive to get over to the McCall, Idaho area. That's near Hell's Canyon, but it's in Western Idaho. And um, I will be visiting with many of you. Uh, sounds like about 100 of you will be hanging out uh, near McCall, Idaho, uh, Monday and Tuesday. I don't have the details, but there's some public field trips, and I've already commented that I'm afraid that public invitation has been removed and closed because we have too many people as it is. But those of you that have been in contact with Leslie from Boston, you know what's going on. You probably know more than I do, but Basil Tickoff and I and some others will be, uh, maybe Stacia Gordon, um, will be uh, practicing uh, field trips for the Penrose Conference both Tuesday and Wednesday of this week. I doubt that I'll be filming or trying to live stream during those two days because there'll be plenty of visiting with those folks. Um, but I will be live streaming and recording videos, maybe just live streaming, I'm not sure, uh, starting uh, this coming Friday, or, or that's when the conference begins. The Penrose Conference, which is a group of 75 geologists from around the world who will be converging in either McCall, Idaho for a while and then Riggins, Idaho for a while. And there'll be some conference days where I'll be there moderating a little bit and also just sitting back and kind of taking notes. I can't film during the actual uh, days that the geologists are discussing oblique subduction and tectonics involving Baja BC. Uh, but I, my job is to be a mouthpiece for the conference, to communicate what's been going on uh, each of the days. And it's a full week of this. And so the plan is loose, but that's why I'm here tonight. I'm reminding myself after trying a few other times to use the Starlink system to have good, high quality, high speed internet so that I can be fully functional uh, out in the woods somewhere. I have no idea how remote we will be. Uh, but there will be some, li I, I promise that, there will be at least a few, maybe a bunch, of live streams coming directly from Western Idaho, starting whatever it was, August 18th until the 25th. I think that rings a bell, a Friday to a Friday. So that's primarily why I'm here tonight and why I will be here again tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. That's Sunday morning, 8 a.m. Pacific time. We'll, we'll do a, a more formal presentation. I do want to talk about Jay Harlan Bretz, however, which has nothing to do with the with the Penrose Conference. But I I'm so into this Brett stuff now uh, that I will not be able to shut that off. And we've been up in Alaska for a week and a half, Muffler Boy. Up in Alaska with family for a week and a half, and we were just in the Corvallis, Oregon area for most of this week. And I had Brett's papers with me. And every morning, uh, Liz is teasing me when we're with family and friends. And they're like, oh, Nick's in there with his colored pens. She hears the little clink, clink. And I'm putting down the red pen for Wisconsin, picking up the blue pen for Spokane. I'm serious. If you remember those videos from this spring, and I said I was going to color code everything. I was going to get all the old Brett's papers. And I'm going to color them by uh, vintage. Wisconsin, uh, ice, 
Wisconsin Ice Age floods, blue for Spokane Ice, Spokane floods. All through the 1920s, I've got that going. And we will be sinking in in specifics tomorrow morning uh, during the Sunday morning live stream. But in addition to the Brett's papers, which have been out there and published for everybody, if you go to nickzentner.com and you haven't been in a while, and you click on the word floods in the upper right-hand corner. Maybe I'll have it figured out on how to do that with you tomorrow. You can read Brett's notes. His notes that were typed up by him personally with his little manual typewriter as he's going back to Chicago on the train, apparently, uh, every September at the end of a field season. And I am getting so much out of those notes and how Brett's is thinking and more important, I don't really don't want to steal tomorrow morning, but, and more importantly, how he's not stubborn. I thought he would be a stubborn guy. I thought he would just make a call on something and never back off of it. I thought that was his personality, just kind of my way or the highway kind of a guy, but he's talking to himself in these notes. Like most of us do when we write down notes in the field. And he's saying, I, I wonder if I was right in 1922. And here I am revisiting this site in 1923 and making notes to myself to come back in 1924 and to measure this or to actually write handwritten. In the, and I'll show you some of these notes tomorrow or you can go right now if you can't wait. He's got handwritten notes like wrong, like he's coming in a year or two later, maybe 10 years later. I have no idea. And annotating his original notes from each of those field seasons. That is a thrill, and thanks to Springfield Ryan, who drove up from Springfield, Illinois, up to Chicago and spent a day taking photographs of certain summer field seasons. I've already thanked Ryan on one of these other videos. But today, tonight, I will also want to thank for the first time Portland Bryan who contacted the librarian at the University of Chicago and somehow talked her or a staff person into making original scans of many of those summers. So if you go to nickzentner.com and click on floods in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see a professional looking, you can see the actual pages. They're not just little, uh, you know, uh, poor quality uh, photos, which I greatly admire from Ryan. But Brian somehow got this staff to at least uh, take one of the notebooks from 1922 to 1926, and it's right there in living color. I don't want to overstate it because I'm not sure yet, but I think it's possible those notebooks and the notes that are available to you so far, and I got a bunch more that I haven't posted yet. I think it's possible less than 10 geologists have seen those notes in the last 100 years, because as I understand it, up until Recently, the only folks who have seen those original Brett's notes from those notebooks physically went to Chicago, as Springfield Ryan did, and sat with them. I didn't know of anybody actually taking photos of them because maybe the visits from Vic Baker or Richard Waite or John Sonickson, maybe they didn't have iPhones at the time. Anyway, the point is, it is a thrill to read this stuff. And if nothing else to say, I know exactly where he was on each day that he was here in the summer of 1922, 1923, 1924, 1925, 1926, 19, you get it? I, I We're going to get so much mileage out of that. Oh, for what you say? Well, if you missed it, we're doing an alphabet series this coming winter from mid November to mid February and it's going to be mostly Brett's. And we're going to take all these themes that I've been kind of exposed to, these narratives that I think are very interesting, and I'll be vague about them tonight. Maybe I'll be vague about them again tomorrow, but I'm having this winter. And yeah, we'll have some live geologists as well. And then there'll be three downtown lectures that will be brand new, capping the whole thing next April, which I've also announced. All right, well, I ran inside. Let me do this.
Do you have this book? Brett's Flood, The Remarkable Story of a Rebel Geologist and the World's Greatest Flood by John Sonicson. I've confessed before that I was really never much of a J. Harlan Brett's fan because I kept hearing the old story of Brett's and he didn't sound like a very likable person. And I think that's still, that's still true to a degree. <laughs> but this book broke it open for me, which I read on an airplane, I think going to some other country back in 2018, I can't quite remember. But now that I'm so deep into the Brett's original work, I've gone back to John's book. And John lives over in the Spokane area. And I met with him once right before the pandemic. And he loaned me a bunch of papers. And I just recently got them back to him because I forgot that I had them. But I'm now taking notes on every page just to organize myself. Oh, get, the, get the tracking off. Sorry. It's, I think it's time that I'm going to show you some stuff. So let me turn off the tracking. And then we'll just interact a little bit more before we say goodnight tonight. So I'm, there's interesting stories involving Israel Russell. I'll save that one. Maybe we'll do that tomorrow. Uh, Brett's had geology students in his field course that were killed. And yet he kept his job. Joseph Pardee is part of this. Uh, every page has detail, and the detail was interesting to me before, but now I know exactly where Brett's was in each of these summers, so I'm going back and reading Sonicson's book uh, to make it work. Let me give you one quick example, and then we'll say hi to a few of you, and I guess answer a few questions you might have based on the few morsels I have for you tonight. If you saw the Joel Gombiner video from Moses Cooley, you remember that I, this is my process here. So these are the notes that you can read. And I'm using a yellow Sharpie for any geographic place. I'm using blue each time we have a Spokane flood tied to Spokane glaciation, red, Wisconsin flood, Wisconsin glaciation, green for anything older than the Spokane time. And my process then is to go through each of these pages of the notes, keep track of places, use my colors. And I think one thing I'm going to do is eventually I'm going to not use the scissors, but, but I guess on my computer, I'm going to grab him talking about Moses Cooley in 1922 and grab him talking about Moses Cooley in 1923, Moses Cooley in 1924, Moses Cooley in 1925, and put those clips together in one document, maybe just for myself, but maybe for all of us. And we can see his evolution and thought. I think that's an important part of this. As I said a few minutes ago, he was fluid in his thinking. He was imaginative in his thinking, and he talked himself out of certain things. And I have my eye particularly kind of primed uh, for those moments because I think that's important to include. Uh, I grabbed a bunch of stuff. What else should I show you real quick? And then we'll, we'll do more of this tomorrow. We have 375 watching. Oh, I don't know. I guess I'll go back and show you this one more time. That combined with a conversation with Brian Atwater in the Upper Grand Coulee two years ago, this map is what got me going along this Spokane story. This beautiful color map from 1928. And if you've been following along this spring with the videos, you already know the backstory on this. And I think that's what I need to try to figure out. I think somehow I want to keep making live and recorded videos involving Brett's and the Ice Age floods 
but I somehow have to figure out how not to keep repeating myself. And my instinct is to repeat myself because not all of you are watching each of these videos. And so if I'm suddenly talking about the Mondovia horseshoe, you're like, what, what is that? Even though I've done three videos already on this thing, I've, I've decided to call the Mondovia horseshoe and Brett's has all sorts of detail about that area in these notebooks. So I guess I'm going to be, I don't know, I'm thinking out loud. I guess I'm going to be scattered, follow my interest, inter, uh, instincts and interests, especially when I get back from the, remember the next two weeks, I'm not going to be thinking about the floods at all, but I'll probably still bring my colored pens. I'll probably still bring Brett's, start the day before I start thinking about Baja BC, using my little pens just as a meditative device. But I think once we get to November and we start the Ice Age floods A to Z, in our accustomed format in the classroom and all that and the spinning globe and you know then i do need to start from scratch assuming that a bunch of people in the a to z series haven't been with us in the last six months which is probably not true but i think that's going to be the easiest way to just start from and just have all this stuff ready to go thanks to sharon and malaga thanks to sharon and Colville, thanks to springfield Ryan and Portland Brian and so many others. Joel, who just sent a map. I'll try to figure out how to share Joel's map tomorrow. Okay, uh, let me grab the iPad. We'll sign off, but I'll just answer. Do you, do you have a few questions? I guess just about anything that I've touched on here, and we'll just we'll just go back and forth for a few more minutes before we say goodnight. The lighting's not bad, is it? So the sun is the sun has already set, but this is an interesting experiment in lighting uh, this late in the day. Oh, I turned off, I turned off tracking. Let me, well, just to show you quick, if you have a question, go ahead and type in, uh, in uppercase. Let me show you in case you haven't been with us that, uh, there's the power supply that I'm practicing using. There's the Starlink dish that's providing the high-speed internet. And you're on the ice chest, which are on sawhorses. And this is probably the setup that I'm going to be using in Idaho. Although for all I know, it's some fancy thing. But even if there's a fancy conference center or conference room or something, I, I think I want to be outside. Since I can be outside like this, uh, I'll be trying to just, you know, visiting with some of these geologists that you know, Stephen Johnston, Mr. Ribbon Continent himself. Okay. A couple quick questions. I think I'll leave this one up. Uh, uppercase, if you have any uh, questions, where's Bijou? I don't see him. Bijou! He maybe went into the house with Liz. I didn't give you much detail, so maybe maybe there isn't obvious questions. Scrolling back. Oh, there's no question. No questions. Okay. All right. Okay. Fair enough. Well, I will do a little bit of prep uh, to get ready for tomorrow morning, and I'll see some of you if you're free, live, Sunday morning, August. 13th, 8 a.m. Pacific time. We'll be right here with different lighting conditions. I guess I need to remember to turn the sprinklers off so I don't get all wet. Uh, but we'll have a good time tomorrow, I hope. And the topic will be some of the details of the Brett's work that has been happening in the last few weeks. Thank you. I love you. And goodbye from Ellensburg, Washington, USA. Here's to you. Good night from Ellensburg, Washington.